Think back to the last time you started something new. It might have been your first day of high school or your first day at a new job. How did you feel? In seventh grade, on the morning that I was about to start volunteering at Kittizens, an after-school program where students build cities out of Legos and act as the mayors of them, I was so scared and intimidated. In fact, I didn't even want to go. At, even though I've loved playing with Legos, and I've loved playing with Legos since I was at a very young age, I was still so nervous about volunteering at Kittizens, even though it was the perfect place for me to start volunteering with students who also love Legos. On that first morning, I arrived 30 minutes early as a thought of walking into a room full of 25 kids staring at me seemed like one of my worst nightmares. That morning, I took the first steps through the door of Kittizens, and as the students slowly started to trickle in, I started engaging with them. Over the course of the week, I found that as the students' Lego structures built, grew taller and taller, so did my self-confidence as an instructor. That also grew. Every time I would find that exact piece that the students were looking for, they were overwhelmed with joy. Elementary school students are also very funny and energetic, and their smiles carried me throughout my week. Knowing that the students would be waiting for me every time I came back is what made me want to keep coming back week after week. After six months of volunteering at Kittizens, I was promoted to the position of assistant birthday party coordinator. I was in eighth grade, and at this time, I was very excited to have my first job. One of my duties as assistant birthday party coordinator was being the guy who had to stand at the front of the door and have a big smile and say, hello, welcome to Kittizens. How are you doing today? First, I didn't want to do this, as it seems so scary to have to greet so many new people in such a short period of time. This, was, this just sounded so scary to me, but I got into it, and eventually this became one of my favorite things to do, as I felt like I had the opportunity to make a good first impression on behalf of Kittizens. After volunteering at Kittizens for two years, I decided it was time for a change. I already been there for two years, and I wanted to take my skills to a newfound avenue. A quick search on volunteermatch.com, a LinkedIn-style job posting website except for volunteer opportunities, led me to Reading Partners, a children's literacy nonprofit organization. At Reading Partners, it was, it was a perfect match because it was another teaching opportunity and it had the added benefit of being within biking distance from gun. At Reading Partners, I tutored students one-on-one, -on -one, and these students were behind on their reading as according to state standards. As opposed to the students at Kittizens whose parents could afford to send them to expensive after-school programs and pay for $600 birthday parties, the students at Kittizens all came from low-income families. This change had a really profound impact on me as I really felt I was making a difference in the lives of the students that I was serving. Knowing that I would be able to tutor with Antonio is what made me want to keep coming back week after week. And as opposed to citizens, when I was assistant and the class could theoretically function without me, at Reading Partners, I tutored one-on-one. -on -one. So if I wasn't there, I wouldn't be able to read with the students, and they wouldn't be able to read with me. I had several very memorable conversations with one student whose name was Antonio. I was assigned to tutor him every week, and he informed me how his parents worked two full-time jobs from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., and when they came home, they were so tired and exhausted that they did not have time to read with him. This made my role feel particularly special. On sweltering days when the bike ride to the school was sticky and wet, I wanted to turn around. But it was knowing that I would be able to tutor Antonio on the other end is what made me want to keep pedaling just a little bit faster, a little bit further, as I knew in moments I would reach reading partners. Antonio and the students at Reading Partners were also very appreciative of me. One day, I decided to give a holiday gift to Antonio. It was a very humble gift. It was just a $3 bag of Ghirardelli peppermint bark chocolate, one of my favorite chocolates. But his smile was as if I'd given him a pot of gold. I happened to bike past Antonio on his way home from school, 
and he was telling his brother how happy he was with this bar of chocolate. It was a few hours until the last remnants of that smile left my face, and it taught me how much happiness I gave myself by giving someone else a gift, even if it was a small gift, like a $3 bag of chocolate. Antonio and the students at Reading Partners also taught me to appreciate my own opportunities and privileges growing up in Palo Alto. Living, up in, the, living in the bubble of Palo Alto, it was hard to imagine that there were students just a 20 minute bike ride away from me that did not have access to the same opportunities that I've been fortunate enough to have. El Camino Real, the main car route to the school, does a very good job of obscuring neighborhoods, but the bike routes took me through the hearts of the neighborhoods in which I served and gave me a glimpse of the lives that my students lived. One day, when we, were, when we were reading a book about Legos during free reading time, I asked Antonio, what's your favorite Lego set? I was so shocked to hear that he had no Lego sets at home. Thinking about the mountains of Legos that my friends and I had that we would often play with during play days during elementary school, I realized and imagined how my life would have been different without these opportunities in, our, in places such as the first Lego League a robotics competition that is designed for fourth to eighth graders. I further investigated to see if there are any after school programs in the fields of STEM and robotics at Antonio School. And when I found that there were none, I decided if someone has to take action, that is me. I contacted the principal of the school and I proposed to teach a free after school Lego robotics class at her school. I explained that I would be purchasing all the equipment and that I would also be developing the curriculum because I wanted there to be no financial barrier for these students and low-income families to take my classes because that was the inherent problem that I was trying to solve. The curriculum I developed called for Lego Mindstorms EB3 kits. And I chose to teach with these kits because they are, first off, they're very easy to understand and they're designed for elementary school students. They taught all the basics of engineering and all the basics of programming. And the other benefit of teaching with LEGO Mindstorms EV3 kits was that it was the exact kit that was used during the first LEGO League, the same challenge that I've been fortunate enough to participate in twice. I wanted to give these students the same opportunity to participate in the first LEGO League, so teaching the class with LEGO Mindstorms EV3 kits was a no-brainer. On the, the curriculum I developed, called for seven 90-minute after-school weekly classes, and I made sure that it covered all the basics of LEGO engineering and programming. On the day of the first class, I was so nervous, and because it's so, I was so nervous that part of me didn't want to go. This time, I was in charge of the class, and I had no idea what to expect. As opposed to citizens and reading partners, this time, if there was an issue, there was no higher power which I could just default the issue to. I had to fix it and I had to pinpoint the issue myself. For example, if a computer malfunctioned, I was forced to diagnose the issue and figure out what kind of a problem it was and fix the computer. I also developed my own teaching abilities. I found that right balance between being strict enough such that the students would follow my directions while at the same time being kind to the students because, well, that's very important. Through this first session, I was really focused on making sure our hard product was down. Although expanding our program was in the back of my mind, that was not at all something I thought about during this first session. I wanted to make sure that our foundation was strong, so that in case we decided to expand our program, it wouldn't collapse on its foundation. I worked out several kinks of the class, such as finding that ideal number of volunteers in the class. At first, I found that when one volunteer was sick, it put too much strain on the other two volunteers who were forced to manage more groups than they were supposed to. So I added another volunteer for the second session, and I found that right balance between having enough volunteers such that the volunteers that were there had something to do and weren't bored, while, while having enough such that all the classes were covered and that the volunteers were there weren't too stressed out by having too many things to do. As we received an outpouring of feedback from the students, parents, and school, we realized we were making a positive difference in the communities that we were serving. Every time we would call cleanup, the students would moan and groan, not because they didn't like cleaning up, 
but because they realized they would have to wait another week before programming the robots again. At the end of the first session, we had a couple of parents approach us and thank us personally for providing such an opportunity to their students. They asked how their students could sign up for our next session. Sure enough, seven out of the 10 initial students in our first session signed up for our second session. A sign that our program was not only fun and engaging to the students, but it was also creating meaningful impact in their lives. We knew we had to expand our program into something bigger, given all the positive feedback we got. Just us, as three volunteers, teaching the one class was good, but that wouldn't be sufficient if we wanted to make greater impact. In preparation for expansion, we decided to incorporate our program as a 501c3 nationally registered nonprofit organization and named it Robotics for All. The mission of Robotics for All is to help close the opportunity gap by providing free after school classes to students in low income communities. However, the first step of getting this incorporation was not easy, as we could not afford to pay for a lawyer to fill out all our legal paperwork. To solve this issue, I bought a legal book on Amazon and pieced together various information from different legal websites. After four months and piles of paperwork, we finally got the certification, and that gave us great satisfaction. Not only did this give us credibility as an established nonprofit organization, but it also allowed us to receive donations that were tax deductible. It meant that Robotics for All had grown from a small scale high school project to an established legitimate nonprofit organization. And to expand our program, we need three things. We need schools to teach the class at, volunteers to teach the class, and we need funding to purchase the equipment. To find schools to teach the class at, we performed a targeted search on greatschools.org in pursuit of schools that had over 50% of students coming from low-income families. We then emailed their respective principals, and although only one in 10 responded, each response was like winning the lottery. We couldn't wait to get started. To find volunteers, we first asked our classmates and friends. We then later used volunteermatch.com, the same exact online platform that I used to first find reading partners. To find, to find get equipment, we need to raise $1,800 per school, and that comes in the form of Lego Mindstorms EV3 kits, laptops, sorting boxes, and miscellaneous supplies like blue tape and batteries. For the first class, I mainly self-funded the money I earned as Kittizen's assistant birthday party coordinator. But for the second class, we knew we had to get funding from an outside source. Through my involvement on the City of Palo Alto's Think Fund, I became aware of, of, of Think Fund, a program that sponsors teen ideas. This program, we, we applied for a grant and they, we got $1,800. And we used those funds to expand to our second location, Montaloma Elementary School, in September 2019, 2018, and launched our website, www.roboticsforalleducation.com. That fall, I was talking to my friend in Massachusetts, and I was telling him about what I was doing here in Silicon Valley. He seemed so intrigued and wanted to start his own branch of Robotics for All in the greater Boston area. So for that school, we ran a fundraising campaign on GoFundMe.com, and we raised funds that way. That class started in February 2019, and it was our third location overall, and first location outside of the state of California. I happened to visit that class during my visit to the East Coast in April 2019, and seeing the students aptly program the robot gave me great satisfaction knowing that the program that we established here could be duplicated to a school over 2,700 miles away. Teamwork has been an essential part of Robotics for All, and as you can see from the photo behind me, there are so many more volunteers besides me. Some of them you might recognize. These volunteers are so passionate and dedicated to our program, and their, and their passion has been the only reason why we've been able to grow at the rate we've been able to grow at. I've also learned so much from my team. For example, my partner and vice president of Robotics for All, Garrett, has taught me so much, and we are grateful for our team, and I've learned so much from everyone. This growth and passion of our volunteers has allowed Robotics for All to expand into the nonprofit organization that it is today. Today, we have three after-school robotics classes in 10 schools in over three states, and in just two weeks, we'll be expanding to our fourth state, Virginia. 
And we are definitely, and, and we have taught over 500 students since our first class in November 2017 with an active volunteer base of over 30 volunteers, and we've raised over $30,000. And we are definitely, definitely not stopping here. There are over 15 million students from families in poverty, as according to the latest US Census Bureau statistic. Our vision is to have free robotics classes to students in every low-income community across this country. And in order to do that, we are gonna build an online platform that directly connects volunteers with schools. We will provide all the equipment, we will purchase all the materials, and we will provide teaching support and curriculum. And we hope this will allow for a seamless expansion. And this is only the beginning. At Kittizens, I, I learned my passion for teaching. Furthermore, I gained self-confidence and the ability to greet strangers. I didn't know at that time, but this was crucial in Robotics for All when I met new principals and new volunteers. The ability to greet strangers is a very important skill. At Reading Partners, I realized that there were students just a 20-minute bike ride away from home that did not have access to the same opportunities that I've been fortunate enough to have. These students are just as capable and just as smart as their more affluent peers. It's simply their lack of opportunities that has prevented them from achieving their full potential. I realized this potential last fall when I was working in Antonio School and a student approached me and said, I know you, you're Max. I didn't recognize the student, but he said that he'd taken my robotics class two years ago and that he was a friend of Antonio, that first student who I taught at Reading Partners and the student who had later taken my robotics class. Walking away, I could feel my eyes filling up with tears. Learning that Antonio was doing well in middle school and that this student also remembered my name reminded me of why I started Robotics for All, reminded me of why I biked through sweltering days to reach the school, why I stayed up late preparing curriculum countless times, and how I met so many passionate volunteers in this process. So the next time you have an idea to start something new, whether it be a new volunteering opportunity or any other activity, go for it. It might seem intimidating and scary at first, but you'll never know where you can learn from it. You might not even want to go the first day, just like me, my first morning of citizens. But I promise you that you will learn so much from it. And for me, taking one step forward through the door of citizens that first morning, 30 minutes early, unlocked a world of possibility and opportunity. And if you don't know where to start, please feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to give you some guidance and let you know where to start. One step at a time, we can move forward and change the world. Thank you very much.